Welcome back to Christ-Centered Christian Animation. In this story you will learn about Sister Catherine, and the doors she unknowingly opened to the enemy. The enemy does not care if we are ignorant of his devices, he is very happy to use our ignorance against us. That is why the Bible said that the people of God get destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Just as God gives us the nine fruits of the Spirit, that helps us with our walk. In the same way there are demonic fruits that can hinder our walk. It is our prayer that we will all be very vigilant and sober, against this wicked adversary, because he walks around to see who he may devour. Now, let's get to the story. Thank you Holy Spirit. I am very sorry to hear about the condition your sister is in Sister Catherine, losing her husband and child a few years back, and now she is unable to speak or walk. May God grant her mercy. As for you Sister Catherine, all that you are going through, come as a result of your own actions, I am sorry to put it so bluntly, but this is what the Lord says that you need to hear. It all started when you opened the door to witchcraft. Witchcraft. With all due respect pastor, I cannot and will not accept that, it is clear you are a discerning man, but it is not me, who have done that, but rather my twin sister. My twin sister made that choice to get her answer outside God, so what is it? I am now guilty because of association. I am not even associated with her anymore because of that, I cannot tell you how hurt I am about that, how much I miss her, but I follow the principles of Jesus, who is my brethren, those who do the will of the Father. She even told me what to do, and I refused. I am a child of God, I do not compromise with my walk pastor and I have never and would never get involved with witchcraft of any form, at no time. Thank you Holy Spirit. Pastor, I truly miss my sister, but after her husband and child died suddenly, we went to this meeting, and unknown to me, this woman told her that it was her best friend that caused her husband and child to die. Despite my advice, she set out to destroy her, and now delve deeply into witchcraft. It hurt me greatly pastor because we were inseparable before, and very close, for you to say, that I am involved in witchcraft and that all my calamity is my own doing. Although I only known you three short months, I respect you pastor, because I see that you are a man of the word of God, but I cannot hear you say such things especially after what I am going through. It is because I respect you as a pastor, and have seen you pray for many, for their deliverance, and they were delivered, that is why I came to speak to you about my sister. I am feeling bad as it is, and I cannot listen to you speak to me like this, I'm sorry pastor, I have to go, sorry I bothered you, I must go. I told myself that this was my last church, and this is it, I will be staying home from now on, I will serve my God from home, I cannot listen to you putting me down and saying such things about me. I just can't. I came thinking that you would be able to pray for my twin sister, but instead you were pulling me down, and I cannot take it pastor, I must go now. I do not mean to offend you sister, or make you feel bad, but I hear the voice of the Lord clearly and this is what I hear. Sister Catherine, the Lord loves you very much, he wants to help you, that is why he brought you here. From the first week you came, both my wife and sister Teresa, try to reach out to you, to connect with you, but you always told them you have to go, also you did not even give your telephone number, the moment service is finished, they told me that you leave quickly, you always seem to be running. I have to go pastor. At that moment, the Lord spoke to Pastor Nathan and said call her little precious. By then Sister Catherine had stood up to go, so Pastor Nathan said, please sit down little precious. Sister Catherine sat back down in shock, and then she said, what did you call me? How did you know that name, who told you, only my mother's mother, my grandma used to call me that? She said that was her name for me, no one else knew that name, it was when I would go and visit her, and when she was about to pray, she would say, please sit down little precious, come with grandma to the throne of grace, the Lord loves you so much my little precious. The Lord reveals that name to me, in this moment, because he loves you so much, he wants you to stop running, he wants to help you today. Every person that come to our church, I always want to know what bring them to us, who invited them, and whether they leave a church to come to us. The principle is that we belong to the same Heavenly Father, and I want to make sure that, 
no one leave their local assembly just like that. That is the reason why, since you came to our church, I got my wife and sister Teresa to speak to you but they never really got a chance, as you always leave quickly after each service. Catherine always leave quickly, because she told her husband the time to pick her up, and so she always leave quickly so that he does not have to come in and be questioned. Pastor Nathan continues. I am also hearing the name Jonathan, who is Jonathan. Sister Catherine could not believe that Pastor Nathan called her husband's name. She had no time to think or deny, so she said, That, that is my husband. Your husband is a very good man, a very godly understanding man, and although he begged you to stay and make amends with your former pastor you still left. When you left in such a way, it was the catalyst for all the other doors, that is not of God, to be open to afflict your life, and I want to make this clear. The things you are going through have nothing to do with your pastor. He did not put a curse on you, contrary to what you heard. Catherine Mind went to what Sister Agnes said to her yesterday. All that you have been going through this past five years. I hate to tell you like this, but I think that it's because of what Pastor Amos did. Pastor Amos, how do you mean? I think that he put a curse on you, that is why you are going through all that. Remember few weeks before you left, he gave a word that God will be blessing you with the fruit of the womb very soon, it's been five years, and where is it, I am sure that he put a curse on you. No, I cannot believe that, he is a man of God, I do not think he would do such thing. My dear, he is still a man, and since you left the church, so many people left, and for all you know he blames you for it, and that is why he placed a curse, so you will not prosper. Maybe you are right. I have not been prospering ever since I left. Still I cannot believe that Pastor Amos, who knew me from I was a little girl would put a curse on me. Believe what you like, but I say all that you have been going through started after you left, why did it not happen before, I believe that he has cursed your life. Sister Agnes if you believe this about Pastor Amos, why do you still go to his church? Oh, and I will never leave, no matter what. I do not want him to put a curse on me, so that my life become curse like yours. Sorry to say it like that. Did you hear what I say sister, you wandered off. Sorry about that, pastor what you say to me, is accurate except for one thing, I have never had anything to do with witchcraft in my entire life, like I said, it is not me, but my twin sister who is involved with that, and I stop communicating with her because that is the lifestyle she now choose. I know what the Word of God said about witchcraft, that it forbids it, and so I would never get involved in any type of witchcraft. So with all due respect Pastor, you're wrong on that one. In the past few years, you have been in six churches, with our church being number seven. You have left all those churches for the same reason, because you became offended. The first church that you left, you were there since you were very young, that was where the Lord placed you and grew you. You left that church because you became angry at the pastor. As we speak, your husband is still going to that church. That is all true pastor, I cannot deny it, but like I said, you're wrong about me and witchcraft. Sister Catherine, I am afraid that I am not wrong. The Spirit of God, bears witness to my spirit that you entered the door of witchcraft. Let me spell it out more plainly for you, Sister Catherine, you are in rebellion. Rebellion, but what does that and witchcraft have in common, according to you pastor, I open the door to witchcraft, am I involving witchcraft or in rebellion, which is it pastor? Sister Catherine they are one and the same, witchcraft and rebellion is the same to God. In 1 Samuel 15 23, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Rebellion was the sin of the followers of Korah in Numbers 16, of those who murmured and protested against their leaders and against those who had special privileges and blessings that they themselves did not have. A rebellious spirit contains the poison of the devil, for Satan is the chief of rebels. Because Satan did not have the same position as God, he rebelled against him. The spirit of rebellion is born out of envy and pride. Satan makes every effort to pour this poison into the hearts of believers and to get them into his hands. When we embrace the number one fruit of the spirit, which is love, lovingly building God's kingdom of love, we have no time to be looking at self or feeling that we have been shortchanged. However, when we embrace witchcraft, 
and rebellion, its only intent is to lead us to destruction. There are times when we are tricked by the enemy and we make an honest mistake, yes we sinned but God knows we didn't mean to rebel against him, and so he gives us mercy, because he knows that our heart's intent was to follow him but we were deceived. Once we realize our mistake we must repent and turn away or we may fall more deeper into rebellion. There are times when we all disobey God, the differentiating factor here is whether that disobedience was intentional or unintentional. If God has made himself clear to you and you willingly choose to disobey, then you are in rebellion. Most of the hardships we go through are a result of us ignoring God's voice warning us, through his words, or through those he sent to warn or instruct us. You have opened yourself to the and rebellion was the catalyst that put you in this situation. The deceitful thing about rebellion is that it camouflaged and portray itself as self-protection, or a person's right, for this reason many are affected by it. Usually we try to make such reactions seem harmless, and do not realize that rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft. What? I, I did not know. Thank you Holy Spirit. Amos, Pastor Amos, are you familiar with that name? That, that is the name of my first pastor, I was at that church from I was a little girl. Sister Catherine, you must make it right with Pastor Amos. You were a very gifted and effective soul winner. Whenever Pastor Amos would give a challenge, to invite unbelievers to the church, you always exceed everyone else, that however change. When Sister Agnes came and started whispering to you that you should be given the recognition of an evangelist, because that was what you are, at first you brushed it aside, and stopped her. However, when Pastor Amos recognized Sister Lois, who had only came to join the church just six months you were very very upset, and you looked at how long you have been there, and she just came and got recognition over you. You went to confront your Pastor Amos about it. He told you that he did as he was led by the Spirit to do, but you were very upset and think that you were overlooked, despite your years of labor for him, you accused him of using you to fill up the church. He told you to wait upon God, because the Lord have great things in store for you and your husband, you refused the pastor correction, and instead, of submitting and repenting, you willingly choose to disobey, and entered into rebellion, which is as the sin of witchcraft. Pastor Amos tried to reach you and so he led you through, the parable of the laborers, told by Jesus in Matthew 20. 1 to 16. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. Now when he had agreed with the laborers for denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard. And he went out about the third hour and saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went. Again he went out about the sixth and the ninth hour, and did likewise. And about the eleventh hour he went out and found others standing idle, and said to them, Why have you been standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and whatever is right you will receive. So when evening had come, the owner of the vineyard said to his steward, Call the laborers and give them their wages, beginning with the last to the first. And when those came who were hired about the eleventh hour, they each received a denarius. But when the first came, they supposed that they would receive more. And they likewise received each a denarius. And when they had received it, they complained against the landowner, saying, These last men have worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us who have borne the burden and the heat of the day. But he answered one of them and said, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go your way. I wish to give to this last man the same as to you. Is it not lawful for me to do what I wish with my own things? Or is your eye evil because I am good? So the last will be first, and the first last. For many are called, but few chosen. That is the exact scripture verses. After he read it to me, I asked him what does that supposed to mean? I told him that it was unfair, and he said that it was not, he said that the Lord have great things in store for me and my husband, but I did not want to hear that, I just felt unappreciated. I felt very hurt, and I would not listen to what Pastor Amos had to say, I kept looking at how he honored Sister Lois, and so I planned in my heart that I would leave and go somewhere where I would be appreciated. So you left without saying a word to the pastor, while your husband remained there. Over these past five years, you have reaped the consequences of rebellion and stubbornness against God's word and instructions for you. 
you have been from church to church, and each time you kept getting more and more hurt. As we speak, you have been through one sickness after the other. About a week ago, you were told that it is not possible for you to have a child. You have been praying for your sister, and she kept getting deeper and deeper into the dark side. At your work people who came after you, and not work as hard or promoted over you. What you said is all true pastor. Rebellion can cost you your blessing, your calling, your anointing, and even your very life, as it was with King Saul. God can only use those whom he can trust to hear, listen and obey his voice, but simply hearing is not enough. We must walk in obedience to God's will, rather than to find ourselves on our own path because of pride and stubbornness. Stubbornness will cause you to lose more than you ever could have hoped to gain. God does not tolerate rebellion, which simplified, is willful disobedience to the voice of God, therefore causing you to willfully follow another voice that is not of God. Pastor what should I do? Like I tell you dear sister, the day you left your church in anger, you swung the door wide open to all these demonic doors into your life. Witchcraft, idolatry, stillbornness, covetousness, by what you say, by hurt, through unforgiveness that leads to bitterness, wrong motives, by objects associated with death or accursed things, and being in dry places. Furthermore, that medallion that Sister Agnes gave you, it is associated with accursed things. What? It was a wonderful belated gift, and she has been my only support, aside from my husband, who see that Pastor Amos was wrong, the way he recognized Sister Lois over me. Dear Sister try to remember back, before she points those things out, you never thought in that way, as for the medallion that you are wearing, you must get rid of it. You must not lend your ear to Sister Agnes, because she is being used by the enemy, to bring you more and more problems. Let me explain to you, what opening these doors have done and caused to happen in your heart, dear sister. You stood stubbornly against your pastor, which is another door that you opened, and the enemy placed your eyes in a coveting way, at what God is doing for others. That is why he made you think that others are being blessed and you are being left behind. That is what you have been looking at, in all the church you went and leave, you cannot find your place, because you left where God had placed you in the first place. Place Sister Agnes in God's hands and pray that she stop gazipping and truly surrender her life to Christ. Your heart have taken many many blows because you did not guard it. You must fully re-surrender your heart back to Christ through repentance and faith. Let him renew your heart and cleanse you from sin's dirty stain and chains which left deeply within you its ugly imprints. God is faithful to forgive your sins and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. In Proverbs 4.23, the words of God said, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. You allow the enemy to get to your heart, and plant the seeds of discontent, leading to witchcraft, and open rebellion against both your pastor and God. Against God, I do not have anything against God. Dear sister, by your actions, though unintentional against God, you show that you do, have something against God, you thought you knew better than your pastor, God's servant, you thought that he was unfair to you, and you even admit that on your way home you were saying to God how much you have done and that it was not fair to you. Remember back what you said sister. Lord pastor said that you told him that you have something great in store for me, but I do not believe him, I think that it is just an excuse, to make me stop talking that he has been unfair to me when I brought in most of the people to the church. I will not set foot back to that church, Jonathan can stay there if he want but I will find another church to go. I will get people and bring them there. That was what you were saying to the Lord. Yes pastor, it is true. Who drew the people sister? I do not understand what you mean pastor Nathan. Okay, let me help you with that. John 6:44. For no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them to me. The Lord may have used you to tell the people about him, but they only came because they were drawn by the Spirit of God, dear sister. You should have never left your church sister, but rather continue on, not because you felt like you were not recognized, but rather because you are serving God. However, if you leave because of false doctrine, that is the church does not teach or preach the biblical gospel, then that is a reason to leave. It is true that, Nothing we do saves us. Salvation is God's free gift to those who trust in the finished work of Christ who was crucified and died for our sins. Therefore, 
Any church that teaches otherwise and embraces a false gospel is not a Bible-believing church, and so you have every right to leave for your spiritual health. Leaving Pastor Amos, where you felt that you were overlooked was not a proper reason to leave, you did not leave because of relocation, or you were being abused, you left because you became offended, because you felt shortchanged and overlooked, you wanted recognition, and you felt you did not get it. Dear sister, God will always give us the desires of our hearts as he tells us in Psalm 37, 4, and he will never keep good things from us as he tells us in Psalm 84, 11. Pastor Amos Church had more to offer you, and you to offer it, than you may realize, that was why the Lord planted you there. You were very effective there and you prospered, because you were in God's divine will for your life, and I am sure you were not as effective at the other churches that you left and went to. You opened the door to witchcraft in your life, and you said that things have not been good. Your sister is clinging on for her life because of her choices, and it was in desperation that you came to speak to me. We will pray for her deliverance, and pray that she will repent and return back to the Lord. She was led astray and deceived by the enemy. God is still merciful, because she's still alive. You must go back and make peace with Pastor Amos. You should have, talk to your pastor before you leave, and since he was the reason, then that is all the more reason why you should have had a conversation with him, and you could have saved yourself a lot of trouble. I had troubles, because Pastor Amos have not wished me well, and put a curse on me. Why would you say such things Sister Catherine? Because Sister Agnes told me that he did. As such, I was wishing that all the people leave and the church door would be closed. My dear sister the church belongs to Christ, and never you wish bad for a church, because you felt that the pastor offend you. If that is a true church, then you are not just fighting the pastor, but you are trying to fight against the church of Jesus Christ. Remember what Hebrews 13:17 says, Obey your leaders and submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be of no advantage to you. If he is a true man of God, and I believe that he is, that is why the Spirit of God reveals what happened, because God loves you and he wants to see you doing well. Anyway, we will go into prayer now both for you and your sister's deliverance. Thank you, Pastor. I am going to pray that all the doors that you entered from witchcraft to idolatry will be closed in the mighty name of Jesus. But, Pastor, I have nothing to do with idolatry. My dear sister, the Bible understands that idolatry extends beyond the worship of images and false gods. It is a matter of the heart, associated with pride, self-centeredness among many other fleshly lust. In your case, pride and self-centeredness, laced with self-pity, camouflaging as your rights, opened you up to, witchcraft, idolatry, stillbornness, covetousness, by what you say, by hurt, through unforgiveness that leads to bitterness, by objects associated with death or accursed things, and being in dry places. Like I said, at the beginning, your actions, have opened you up to all that has befallen you, I never look at things that way pastor. My dear, we are often quick to see others shortcomings, gazing at them with our laser sharp critical eyes, but we view ours through rose colored glasses, that only see a flowery hue, rather than the reality of the true view, from God's point of view. When you first came in here you began by saying that nothing is working for you, and if that was not bad enough, your twin sister is at death's door. The enemy had you saying that nothing is working for you which he made those words come alive in your life because of what you say. Remember dear sister, what the word of God tells us in Proverbs 18:21: death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. You kept going from church to church, where you keep leaving after you felt hurt, each time building a reservoir of unforgiveness, that grew into bitterness. Let me now pray for you, and pray God's mercy for your sister, that she will pull through, and return back to her first love. My dear Heavenly Father, Giver of life, Arthur and Finisher of faith, the new beginning God, the second chance God, the merciful God, I come to you in the mighty name of Jesus, the name that is above every name. Here I am with your daughter Catherine, Father she could have run as she always does, but in your mercy, because of her twin sister's condition, she came to petition heaven mainly on her sister's behalf, for her sister's deliverance, but Lord you who knows all things knew that she herself needed deliverance too. Father, create in her a clean heart, O God, and renew your right spirit within her, according to your words in Psalm 51, 10. Father, as we are calling upon you, 
we know that you will hear and respond. She had treasured bringing in the people to your house, and that through that, the enemy was able to cause her to look on herself, and went into open rebellion against your work, against your servant, which has caused your true peace to be absent from her these past five years. I break off every rebellion and every idols, that had dull her spiritual hearing and hardened her heart to things of God. Sister Catherine repents from challenging your sovereignty and attempts to offer an alternate explanation to the issues of her life. Her gaze will no longer be on herself, where she filters everything through the lens of how it affects her. Sister Catherine will now live to glorify God and reveal his love to a hurting world, as she did before. Father thank you for accepting her back, as she returned to her first love. She knows that the true remedy to all her problems, is Christ alone through repentance and faith in his finished work. Thank you Father for restoring your daughter Catherine, your little precious, back to her place in you. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen. Sister Catherine, before I pray for your sister, I would like to say these few words to you. I believe that you have been restored, and God will give you back all the years that the enemy has stolen. He knows you better than anyone else ever will, and he has no hidden agendas. He will set you firmly on the narrow path through his spirit, which leads to everlasting life. Christ lovingly said to you, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Matthew 11 28-30 What is your sister's name? Her name is Kathleen. You said that a friend is there with her. Call her up, because there will be parts of the prayer that she must hear. The Lord will speak to her spirit. Sister Catherine called her sister Kathleen, and her friend Simona answered. She told her, Pastor is praying for her. Put the phone to her ears. Heavenly Father, here I am again before you, I am coming to you again in the mighty name of Jesus on the behalf of Sister Catherine's sister Kathleen. She is locked into the stronghold of witchcraft by the enemy, who deceived her into thinking that she will be helped by him without consequences. Lord you see that she ventured, where she should not have gone, and sought help from the dark side, Father, delivering Master, the fact that she is still alive, meant that she is still recipient of your mercy. You did not take it away from her, as you did with Saul. Break her free from the idol of self so that she can find freedom to be all that God created her to be, a woman of purpose designed to glorify her Creator God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Kathleen say these words in your heart to God. Through ignorance, curiosity, foolishness or willfulness, and have disobeyed your word to God. I now ask you to help me as I renounce all those things. Lord cleanse me in body, mind soul and spirit. Satan, I am closing any door which I may open to you and your demons through contacts with the occult. Under the authority of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Ghost, I renounce all contacts or any involvement with Satan. I renounce every cult that denies the blood of Jesus Christ and every philosophy which denies the divinity of the Lord Jesus. Lord I confess the sin of seeking from self or Satan the help that should have only come from God. I renounce all his works. I count them as my enemies. I now close the door to all practices and command all such spirits to leave me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I come back to you, like a prodigal. I am sorry that I went astray from your loving arms, because of my hurt and pain and impatience. My husband was told about the car break and he did not listen, and so he lost control of the vehicle that took the life of my son and him. I now know that it was all a lie, and my friend Jennifer had nothing to do with his death. His own negligence cause it Lord. Please forgive me for leaning to my own understanding and going my own way. Thank you for your mercy, that brought me back. I believe that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses me from all sin. I claim freedom from all evil which has come through my eyes, my ears, my mind or through actual participation in sin. The powerful blood of Jesus has cleansed me from all unrighteousness, and whom the Son set free is free indeed. Thank you for my freedom, I am no longer a slave to fear. I have a sound mind, full with God's power and love. I am set free in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Simona began to scream in the phone. She was saying she got up from the bed. She is vomiting all kind of things. Let me get her some towel. After that Kathleen who have not spoken in over a week spoke and said, I am standing. I am walking. I am delivered. God you are real. I dedicate myself to you dear Lord to be used for your glory alone. I want you to control and empower every area of my life, 
including all my emotions. I have freedom from all my former bondages in Jesus Christ's name. Simone am free, am free, thank you so much pastor, thank you. Meanwhile, Pastor Nathan, I cannot thank you enough for everything. I will go call Pastor Amos now, and if he will let me, I will go and see him right away. Before you go, remove that medallion from your neck. It must be destroyed. Sister Catherine gave the medallion to Pastor Nathan to destroy it. She then called Pastor Amos, who answered and said that he was available. He was very happy to hear from Sister Catherine after five years. He has been praying day and night for her. Sister Catherine then called her husband and told him everything. He was overjoyed, and said that he would meet her there. God restored Sister Catherine back to Pastor Amos's church, and Sister Agnes confessed that she was jealous, and that was why she said all those things to Sister Catherine. Pastor Amos and Pastor Nathan became great friends. Six months later. Sis, I really love your new hairdo, it really suits you. I cannot believe that we are sitting outside this beautiful building that God has given you and my dear brother-in-law Pastor Jonathan to lead. You lost time, but we thank God for his restoration and for giving back what the wicked enemy has stolen and even more than you ask or think my sister. He delivered me, and I am at great peace with him, serving him. Glory to our God. That was why Pastor Amos has said that the Lord had great things in store for me and Jonathan and to think how the enemy caused me for five years to open so many doors, doors of witchcraft through rebellion, stubbornness, idolatry to name a few of the many demonic doors that he entered through and afflict my life. He took God's mercy, to take your voice, that you were using to place curse on people, and to take away your feet so you could no longer run to mischief, which caused me to humbly go to Pastor Nathan, not realizing that I too was in need of deliverance. God gave us three for the price of one that day, he delivered me, and bring me back to himself, he healed and delivered you, and took you back to himself, and when Simona your friend saw what God did, she gave her life to Christ. Now we can testify far and wide, and say look what the Lord has done. There is something else, Kathleen, but I change my mind, I won't tell you. You cannot keep any secret from me. Let's have it. We are twins, you know. Okay, 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 you my dear sister, you are going to be an aunt. What? Please don't joke like that sis. It's all true, I am pregnant, Jonathan and I found out yesterday. Oh Catherine, I am so happy for you and Jonathan. Take that devil, God wins every dime, for nothing is impossible with him. Sis, I am so overjoyed. So very happy for you. Thanks sis, love you so much. Love you too. Father thank you so much for what you did for my sister and I, I love you Lord. Let's go, I have a baby shower to plan. Don't you think it's a bit too early? No. I have been waiting almost six years for this. Oh sis, that a very sweet thing to say. Okay let's go. Meanwhile. My dear Pastor Nathan, we must pray the wisdom of God for men and women of God, so that they will embrace building the kingdom of God, and not their own, thus caring for the people's soul. What if you were not a true man of God, both Sister Catherine and Sister Kathleen would be in deep bondage today, continuing on destruction broad road. But thank God that you have the fruit of the Spirit, that is demonstrated by your love for God, and for the people of God. I am so grateful to God to be in such a company as yours. I praise God for you my brother, I praise God for you. To our God be all the glory Pastor Amos. All the glory belongs to our God. I must say, your idea for ministers to meet weekly and pray for each other, as fellow workers in the vineyard of God is pleasing to God, iron sharpening iron, as we live out John 13 34-35, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Well, let me be going dear brother, I will see you on Wednesday, but we will speak before. 
Most certainly, I will head over to our sister church where Sister Catherine and Brother Jonathan now lead, they are having fasting and prayer. Look at God, look what the Lord has done. Our God is truly amazing. If we do not want to be servants of Satan, we must take a clear stand against every spirit of rebellion in us. The first step is to surrender our own opinions completely to God. We must make every effort to adjust to the established order into which God has placed us and commit ourselves to recognizing authorities in their decisions. As a sign of our willingness, we should approach our superiors, no matter who they may be, with respect and obedience. However, if we should see something that needs to be changed, we should ask them humbly to do this and at the same time lay this concern before God, who can move people's hearts. But the important thing, if we do not want to come into the grip of Satan, the chief of the rebels, is that we call upon the name of Jesus as soon as rebellious thoughts begin to arise in us. Bye and thank you for watching, see you soon in part 5 of the chain. It is our prayer that this story was a blessing to you. If you were blessed by this story, please remember to share our video, and encourage others to like and subscribe, so many will see that our God is still in the delivering, healing, saving and restoring business. We greatly appreciate your support of our channel. Remain blessed and have a wonderful awesome day.